Uh, hey, folks, we'll, we'll get started in a couple uh, minutes. I'm just going to allow people to join. Um, actually, I hit the button too soon. So uh, we're going to let people join and we'll get started in a few minutes. So bear with us. Right. So guys, we'll get started in a couple minutes, uh, just allowing people to join. So bear with us and uh, we'll get started in about one minute. So thank you for joining and uh, bear with us. All right, folks, we're going to jump in. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, this is our uh, actually fourth webinar Wednesday for the year. Um, and uh, we're going to be focused on logging in VSI and painless and problem free end user computing today. So thank you all for joining. Uh, it's going to be a fun day. I got some great uh, folks in the room and, and a good guest today. So uh, my name is Pete Downing. I am the uh, CMTO for Zentegra. Uh, and with me, I got Brian. Uh, who is going to be taking us through login VSI and um, you know a good demo today, and we're going to talk about some of the issues you, you are potentially seeing uh, in your BDI environments. And I have a lot of other great folks in the room, and uh, you know from sales and support uh, and marketing, so a lot of good folks on the line. So we have a lot of good uh, people who can answer questions today if you have any good questions. Uh, so we're going to go through uh, really quick. I like to do polls. If you've joined these before, uh, I recognize some of the names on the call. Um, and uh, it just helps us level set and keep the content uh, fresh, but also allow us to talk to it as we go through it. Um, and you know, and it gives us some good snippets of information. Uh, and then we're going to dive into an overview on who is Login BSI if you haven't heard of them, uh, and then focus mainly on a demo today. And then finally, I'll end cap it with some actions that we'd like to see in who is Integra. And as always, I encourage uh, question and answer throughout throughout the uh, webinar. So don't be afraid to put uh, a question in the Q&A dialog. We'll be all tracking it. Uh, and then I throw in Q&A you know, as I see fit. So if you have a question around something, please ask it because I'll throw it in uh, so that it's content specific and we can keep the uh, webinar interesting and interactive. Uh, so again, we are using GoToWebinar and there is a Q&A dialog. So please, please, please ask questions today. All right, so what I like to do um, is I like to throw out some quick polls and, uh, and they help us kind of gauge the webinar and, and really um, you know, make sure that we hit some of the key points that you guys want to see. Um, so the first poll is, uh, is a very interesting poll and what's really cool is Login VSI does a report every year and Brian will talk about this uh, with a lot of great stats. So I encourage you to head to the website, download it, and he'll show you a couple snippets of some of the information they do gather. 
Um, but the first poll is, uh, what are your most uh, important initiatives in the EUC workspace, uh, most important EUC workspace initiatives in the coming one to three years? So if you can take a minute and pick the thing that's most top of mind for you um, over the next one to three years. And again, we can't see who's responding. So if you're you know, worried about we see your name, we don't see your name, don't worry. So please uh, take a minute to respond. I'll give a couple seconds and I like to at least get 75% or more. This tells us that you guys are paying attention. So I think that you were maybe slightly surprised by this answer, right? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was surprised because I thought it was going to be another one of these on the list and it's going to come out to what we thought is the answer. <laughs> wow. Okay, great. Yeah. Everyone's on point at least. All right. We're going once, going twice, going three times and we're going to share this. Um, so, you know, uh, this aligns to what login is seeing. Um, and uh, again, you know, the top three here that you see, there's a tie between three of them, but I'll say from top to bottom, those are the top three that they've seen in their survey. But Windows 10 is definitely top of mind for everybody. So we're, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that today. And how that's relevant. And how that's relevant to uh, Login BSI. We'll also talk about desktop as a service, uh, change control, and I got another question that's coming up around, you know, how you patch. All right, so let's ask the next, the, uh, the next question. So, how many support calls on average uh, do you guys get per week around user experience issues? So it could be log on issues, app performance issues, uh, you know, anything around end user computing. Hey, Citrix stinks. They might use other words. Uh, that's why I don't wear a Citrix shirt when I go in my doctor's office. We're signaling out uh, Citrix here. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, you know, login can help help triage some of these issues, and we'll talk a little bit about that today. All right, guys, come on. We got to get at least up to 70%. Uh, I know we have a lot of uh, folks on the line that are probably not customers, but let's try to get at least a couple more answers to make them statistically relevant. Maybe they're looking for more energy from us, Pete. Yeah, maybe. So, All right, ready? Going once, going twice, going three times. A pretty good spread here. Uh, so, you know, it's a mix between five to, they'll say 20 calls, but, it, you know, 20 plus calls, that's, that's kind of concerning. So... <laughs> So we'll uh, we'll talk about how we can help you guys uh, minimize um, the number of calls you guys are getting around end user experience and how you know login can help uh, login VSI can help with that. All right, another question around you know uh, that we're gonna you know that's content related is how long does it take you guys to deploy uh, an application update or patch to your production? So you know include you know your testing, your packaging. Uh, and you know, and this could be a simple Windows patch. It could be, it could uh, be a branch build. It could be a Windows branch 10. build. It could be anything, but typically on average, right? So, yeah, I know it all depends too on what it is, but uh, again, the goal here is to get an idea. It could be a priority one. Yep. Security. Yeah. So, like uh, one of the things you guys talk about is um, L1 Spectre. Yep. 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 Spectre meltdown. Yep. All right. Ready? Going once. Going twice, going three times, and wow, a lot of you guys get them out pretty quick. So we'll we'll talk about we'll talk about that. But I, I'm guessing when it comes to Windows 10 updates, it's a little longer. So we'll we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, and then a lot of you fall in the one week bucket. Our goal is to obviously get it less than a week and make it more a little more uh, instant, ideally. But build a process around yeah, it, build, really, yeah, as yeah. well. Um, you know, any kind of change you're instituting into your platform, you're introducing a variable degree of risk, right? So yep. we'll talk about end user experience as a KPI and how we essentially invest in protecting that. All right, and then the final poll, um, and it's more of a more market research for myself, but it actually we'll talk a little bit about this today, is how many are you, are you using um, uh, uh, Office 365 and uh, you know M365, whatever you want to call it, but are, are looking at Office 365. So uh, again, this is uh, you know more around just trying to understand what your mindset is around Office, but also more around Exchange. And I and I just I'm looking at the question. I, I got to change my Exchange because it's Exchange Online now is what they call it. Um, and then M365 means more than just Office. It's SharePoint. Uh, you know, so that's how Microsoft is putting it in the bucket now. So that's why I always put parentheses M365. Yeah, they even have a built-in so, security suite yeah. for the platform too through E5, which I find very interesting. Yeah, yeah. 
All right. Well, I got a lot of good respondents here, so that's uh, good. So good. A lot of you using hosted, uh, you know, Exchange Online, which is cool. Um, and you know, if you have any questions around, you know, OST files with BDI, OST files with S server-based computing, so you know, Zen app and and or you know, traditional RDP, definitely let let me know. You know, on the side, you can always email me. You know, I got some good inputs on that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll then we'll talk a little bit about how login VSI can help with you know just general cloud and uh, SaaS based stuff as well. Well, so. you're going to use that uh, exchange with some sort of front end application, right? Yep, Outlook yep. is a key part of most uh, end users, you know, stack of applications they use. So, yep. So, all right. Well, that's those are the polls I have today. And uh, again, thank you for uh, partaking, and it helps us kind of cater the content. Um, and with that, I am going to actually pass over to Brian now, and we're going to go through an overview of login BSI and also take you guys through a nice demo. Uh, he has a lot of cool stuff he wants to show you, and I'm going to pass the controls over to Brian. Uh, I can find you in the list. <laughs> I'm in there. Yeah, you are. And ready to go. There you go. So now the heat is on, huh? Yes, it is, sir. And again, uh, again, we encourage uh, questions. So if you have any questions at all, uh, please put them into the Q and A dialog. Uh, you know, we want to make sure you, we get your questions answered. And you know, as I see fit, I'll throw them in so that they're content uh, aligned with the content that Brian showed. So I was uh, very sternly, I was very sternly told by Pete not to bore you guys with any uh, slideware. So I tried to keep this nice and succinct. Um, and then we'll get into uh, the, the real kind of meat and potatoes of things. But I just kind of wanted to tee up um, the, the presentation to kind of put us all on the same page. So, <clears throat> you know, performance is really key when we're talking about end user experience, the way in which your users perceive um, the, the uh, aggregated experience on the top of the stack, right? Um, and so, it's especially important when you're faced now with the prospect of cloud migrations, remote locations, hyper-converge, the technology changing on a continual basis. Um, what we find is that uh, typically these environments are getting larger. Um, the degree of, of risk um, associated with this uh, becomes exponential as well. So, um, you know, Pete uh, had one of the questions at the beginning of this uh, asking essentially, you know, what is the most important initiative for um, people out there in the uh, EUC workspace um, um, sector, uh, sector? And essentially, our respondents uh, indicate that it's Windows 10, um, which you know I think is is pretty expected. Microsoft is very aggressively pushing Windows 10 out, um, and so you know, uh, out of the 755 people that are essentially surveyed, that was the the top concern. Um, to them. So, you know, how does the VSI solution suite kind of come into uh, play with essentially uh, ensuring good user experience on the top of the stack inside of these uh, very large Windows 10 environments? Um, so we have three products, um, Login VSI, um, which we're traditionally known for. It's our um, load testing software. So uh, at, at the core of our applications, all of them is this virtual user concept, which I'll demonstrate. Um, VSI will essentially introduce a load of virtual users executing a workload um, specific to uh, your type of organization to understand the breaking point. So um, uh, once you get into production, you're going to want to continue to monitor uh, that user experience um, within the platform through Login PI which will continue to execute that workload on a um, perpetual basis. And then uh, login AT for uh, application uh, compatibility uh, standpoint. So as you're making changes, there's a risk associated with whether or not the applications are functional um, within your environment post change. And so AT will assist with that. So there's the three applications, how they kind of uh, uh, stack up many applications, uh, your bulk compatibility, testing them with AT, you're using uh, PI to continually uh, manage your business critical applications, so executing a workload against them into production environment, um, using VSI for load testing um, to ensure that those changes aren't breaking um, the amount of scale that you had tr uh, traditionally uh, received previously. 
So I'm just going to kind of buzz through this really quickly. It kind of shows where all of the different tools fall in the change management process. So new environments, uh, VSI is used for benchmarking, scaling, capacity planning, uh, login AT will be used for availability, compatibility purposes. Um, so you're setting up uh, a good change management process from the beginning um, and assuming that uh, you're planning changes, you're using VSI and AT to establish a baseline, you're using AT from a compatibility standpoint to verify that the applications are functional after the change, uh, VSI to verify that from a, a performance and scalability uh, factor, you're still covered, and login PI once you're into production to confirm availability and performance of those applications uh, as well. Um, so as I said, uh, at the core of our software, this virtual user concept, which you'll see here uh, in a moment. Uh, and then I wanted to give um, one particular case study just to kind of get your, uh, your gear spinning here. Uh, we have a university hospital customer of ours, which is utilizing our uh, change management uh, suite of tools to essentially confirm and manage the user experience with their uh, All Scripts application, which is a, a major EMR, um, their priority one, tier one application. So essentially, if this application doesn't function on top of the stack through which they're providing it, they're you know basically losing revenue or damaging their reputation or you know basically compromising uh, you know their entire <laughs> Uh, delivery uh, system. So we're basically using our uh, solution suite to uh, continually drive interactions with the EMR to understand what the users are experiencing with uh, on a um, continual basis. So uh, should we wait for questions or just jump right into a, a demo? So yeah, uh, so jump into a demo. But again, guys, if there's any questions at all as we go through this, uh, definitely feel free to ask. I, I have a feeling you guys will have some questions as you start seeing the product. But again, definitely uh, chime in, and I'm watching the Q&A dialogue right now. So, yeah, and I'd imagine with EMRs, if they have downtime, it's not a good thing. So, <laughs> absolutely, and and you would almost expect that, you know, in large scale enterprises where you're talking about, you know, hundreds if not thousands of patients on a daily basis coming through the door, that there would be no room for any kind of error in delivery, right? But we continually find time and time again, this is still an issue that large scale hospitals are um, running into. And so, you know, we're, we're basically providing a, a tool set to assist with ensuring that doesn't happen, right? Um, so uh, just to kind of quickly dive through the, uh, the demonstration, what you guys are seeing right now, <clears throat> you know, I said at the core of uh, the application suite is this concept of a virtual user. The virtual user is capable of interacting with your um, environments in a very rich fashion. What you're seeing right now is completely automated. I, I, I promise I'm not touching anything on my screen right now. Pete could actually <laughs> yep, attest to that. <laughs> uh, but it's basically driving application actions through Excel right now. Um, you know, This is something that a typical user on top of your stack might do. Um, the next kind of actions, it, it's going to load up a medical-based software um, to load some imaging in. It might open up an EMR system and process a patient visit or look up some patient demographic information or open up SAP or, you know, uh, book a reservation through something like Sabre. It doesn't really matter at all. It's dependent upon your particular organization. But the gist of it is this. By continually exercising a controlled set of interactions with your environment from uh, you know, positioning specific to where your end users are via this launcher component, which we can kind of talk about um, a, a news release that we just did with IGEL, which, which is really interesting um, for a lot of Zentegra and VSI customers. But essentially, end to end, we're driving a continual interaction with your production environment to understand what your users experience on a daily basis. Once you have that bit of information, you can essentially put in place SLAs, which you can continually check on a regular basis to alert from any kind of variance. So, you know, the, the, the question came up, you know, what, that hospitals are experiencing issues where the EMR system becomes unavailable to them versus waiting for your 
your actual consumers of the EMR to call you up and say, hey, you know, Pete, this isn't working. And then you have to build this large amount of context around this very subjective idea of user experience. We're now giving you objective data set to essentially understand day in and day out what your what your users are experiencing. So that's kind of how you manage change on a continual basis. Yep. This is happening all day long as you know, minor patches, releases, system degradation over time, uh, an expanding user base on your infrastructure. As all of that happens, we're continually checking against that baseline performance to ensure that we're adhering to um, our user experience that we had basically teed up with Login VSI from the, from the get-go. Um, so any questions about any of that? Um, yeah, so uh, so Andy uh, asked a great question. Um, do people build in login VSI sign-off into their change control processes? So that is an interesting concept and um, one that actually does happen. Right now, it's more of a, a manual type process. So we can generate SLAs through PI, which I'll demonstrate. VSI will generate you a bunch of charts and graphs. But conceptually, in the future, with the new architecture of PI, which I'm demonstrating right now, we'll essentially be able to provide you with a dashboard that will be your centralized change control management platform. So, hey, boss, everything is good to go. Go to this web address that I link you to, sign off on it, roll the change out. So you get everyone in the organization on the same uh, page, understanding these changes before they happen, safeguarding your user experience. Nice. Uh, and then Luke asked, uh, how difficult slash uh, time consuming is it uh, to workloads. set up these scripts? Of course, that's so. going to be that. I, I literally get that question every single day. Yep. And I'm going to show you a, uh, a revolution that we've made within the software to make that very easy and simple for you. All right, and then I have a, a potential question around. So what so the workload we're seeing up here, um, is that running in like a separate virtual machine and that just runs all day? And yes. That, is that in a separate architecture? What's the recommendation on how to integrate that into your Absolutely. Design? So it, it all really depends upon what your organization is like, right? Uh, let's go back to our hospital example before. So hospitals typically will have branch offices, uh, urgent care facilities, uh, locations where you can pick up prescriptions and whatnot. The layout of this would look like as follows. You place these launcher components across your organization in those various rem discrete remote locations. Those locations are continually going through your workload process, through your brokerage process, consuming uh, your applications, um, uh, executing transactions against your ap applications, and also basically timing every single, single interaction. Okay. So we can understand, you know, basically how the geography affects your user experience how the flow of the day affects your user experience. And then, you know, we deploy one of these launchers internally as well. And if it's running all day long, you've eliminated a systemic issue, basically. Cool. So, so the recommendation is you try to run the launcher in the environment that it sits. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Yep. Cool, yeah, guys, keep the questions coming. Again, it keeps it interactive. Good question, Luke. Thanks, Andy, for your question. And uh, again, any questions, definitely put them in. So you've seen uh, the launcher component, you've seen the virtual user executing uh, within the, uh, the environment. Uh, the concept with, with VSI is, as opposed to running this uh, VSI test on a continual basis, you're using PI as a component of this change management suite to continually execute workload actions against the environment. You're using VSI to run a number of these virtual users against a pre-production environment to again, execute workload activities to understand what the breaking point is, uh, essentially, right? So, you know, how do we visualize uh, that data, right? The virtual user is continually executing its workload against that environment on a continual basis. Here's our PI dashboard. This is kind of give, gonna give you a, an at a glance uh, look at your end user experience. Um, we have a dashboard view, which is then broken down into uh, individual geographical locations, um, a specific application that you might be running, and then, oh, hey, by the way, we realize that our customers are also typically running a physical desktop environment alongside of the virtual environment, 
So we have the abil availability to essentially remove the brokerage process and just drive application interactions on that fat client, right? So one of the, the one of the issues with BDI is going that extra mile and getting those uh, stubborn users off of their physical machines because they're used to a certain level of experience. If I can provide them with, again, that objective data set to quantify that the actions that they're doing on their physical machines are going to be the same as on that virtual environment, then I have a much better case for driving utilization of my BDI environment as a whole. Was there another question or? Uh, yeah, so there's one hopefully easy question. Can this can this be offered by an MSP for a customer? I get that question <laughs> every other day. <laughs> um, I believe there's probably some sort of uh, of model where that that works. We do get a lot of managed service providers ask us about that. Um, I'm sure we can uh, direct you to the right person uh, after the webinar. Uh, and then Fran asked the interesting question: Does this virtual user uh, require a coffee break, day off, or va or vacations. I, I think he's being. <laughs> it, 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 do, it, it does, but but less than a, a human yeah, being yeah, yeah, would yeah. <laughs> typically. <laughs> but we can't make our real uh, counterparts look too bad. Uh, uh, so so Michael asked a good question uh, it, it, again because I think we're covering healthcare, but I was going to raise that like I yeah I could see this use, usage in you know. Um, uh, you know, for example, in finance and, and, you know, in CAD scenarios, things like that. So he asks, is this product being used by any universities? Absolutely. Uh, is it capable of working with different types of applications and not just common applications such as Microsoft Office? Yeah, so healthcare is just our largest vertical, followed very quickly by um, finance, right? Um, uh, typically, environments where there's security and regulatory compliances, virtual desktops are very popular, right? Universities seem to be kind of the third uh, vertical that we see. And the reason why is because they're essentially providing resources to their either staff or students to do things like, you know, if it's an engineering school, CAD, or if there is a healthcare school, maybe some, um, you know, stuff for visualizing anatomy or whatever it might be. Um, but essentially, um, yeah, I mean, we could drive interactions with uh, desktops and, or applications in any um, in any situation. Uh, yeah, and Michael, just to add some color to that. Uh, good question, and thank you. Um, the uh, you know uh, we we were working with Andy. Andy, who's our CEO, is actually on the webinar right now. He uh, uh -oh. uh, he he and I were at a customer last week. Uh, they use CAD, and one of the common complaints is that it, it's not performing the way it should. And so where, you know, login VSI could help is identify what's the baseline, identify the problem, and then, you know, help, help, you know, mitigate some of the issues and get in front of it as opposed to having professors come and say, hey, this is not working or, hey, the experience is not great. So we actually talked to that customer last week about, you know, hey, we should, we should definitely have you guys check out you know, login VSI. So, so I think I think it's, it fits very nicely into the, the university setting, especially if you're trying to provide you know services for professors to provide to students, um, and you know depending on the use cases. But there's a lot of I think you know cool use cases you could use you know login VSI. Well, another thing is too is like you just said, you know, you you roll it out and you risk there being a poor performance. With the VSI suite, you would essentially create a workload to ex exactly execute what type of activities that they would be doing before it rolls into production. And so you will have already seen and eliminated the possibility of that becoming a reality um, by testing. Cool. Um, so man, there's a lot of good questions coming in, and uh, I want to make sure you get through your demo. But uh, <laughs> what I'll do is I'll ask one more, and then I'll pause. I'll let, All right, I'll cool. let you do some more demo. But this is a good question too. Uh, you know, how would you incorporate inbound, outbound dialing through this scripting? Uh, our call center uses SAS for con uh, contact management, so calls come in through software slash cloud. Yeah. So you would basically have uh, two workloads. Essentially, one would be the workload that's executing the phone calls and you would have another workload that is essentially receiving the phone calls nice. and you would run them basically simultaneously basically playing you know dialer and receiver and you can time those interactions yeah so maybe this tees you up for maybe a little yeah so show and tell but uh, another question came in how do you 
create a virtual user loop kind of ask how do you create a workload so can you kind yeah, of yeah yeah so that, I'll, so I'll show you actually during you'll notice that there's been a really annoying red box in the middle of my screen <laughs> for the entire time I will uh, that will make sense here in a few uh, minutes um, so you know what does user experience consist of well application performance being an aggregate of utilizing those applications on top of your stack right application failures so how many times do we go to execute a series of actions and they fail log on so when we go to go through the brokerage process and get your resource through Citrix through horizon through an RDS farm how frequently are we able to get that environment and then latency so you know where do you have those launchers geographically positioned when is there a breach of an SLA associated with latency? So typically, if the response time goes above 150 milliseconds, then you're going to start to see some performance degradation from those remote user perspective. We can now say, if it trips 150, please generate an alert to say that that's happening, and you can actually watch the cyclical nature by going back to the historic data points. Um, so from a dashboard view, you're also capable of uh, clicking on each of the, the specific applications. Again, you know, you saw me driving some actions um, through Excel, for example. Every interaction with the application is then broken down into the application start time and timers wrapped around those transactions. So again, if you're a school providing desktops, uh, you know, basically with AutoCAD sitting on top of them, we can essentially have that virtual user log in, open up AutoCAD, pull a drawing in, do some rotations, do a render, time all of those activities to make sure that that's happening on a regular and consistent basis into your production environment, right? So what good is the data by just looking at it in a, in a, uh, in a dashboard view? We also have the ability to chart out those data points given uh, any period of time. So we can select either the story of the latency based upon the positioning of those launchers we can select which launcher we'd like to look at. This launcher is actually located inside of the data center alongside where the workload is actually happening. So that's why you're seeing the 0, 0.00 millisecond latency number. If I had that launcher specifically located inside of our Boston office, which is where we're sitting right now, you would probably see something in the realm of 60 to 100 uh, milliseconds. And that would essentially outline what the base user experience is like. Not necessarily that it's bad as a result of it being that, but understanding what your users are experiencing. You have the ability to drill into each of those applications as well. So you can look at each of those interactions as they're executed over the course of hours, days, weeks, months. And then using that data set, you can identify trends. You know, is every Wednesday at 2 a.m., are we having a spike in the amount of time that it takes to look up a patient record or going through our CRM and looking up uh, an end user record, is that taking too long based upon um, that historic data set? Um, we also have the ability to, on a uh, daily or monthly basis, create SLA reports to essentially build uh, confidence that you're you know, delivering on that end user experience metric. Cool. Um, the, I, again, uh, let's see, we got, well, I got a question I want to save for kind of towards the end once you get the demo done. I actually have two good questions. But All right. Uh, so should I show some of the workload? Yeah, I, I would jump into there. workloads because we had three questions on that and kind of show, you know, what does it take to actually get a workload? So um, this is what a workload looks like. Uh, I had showed you uh, during the uh, demonstration us interacting with Excel, for example, right? And I promised everyone that I wasn't doing it on my own. Now you can actually see what the workload is to do that, right? So each of the applications is modularized essentially into a script with the associated application actions that's uploaded into our management console, which now adds that functionality as a feature of what the virtual user is capable of doing. But essentially we're doing things like we're feeding um, types to that particular window or we're uh, targeting a sub window of that particular application. Um, we can move around and interact with mouse interactions. Um, we can look for images on the uh, on the screen. Um, so you can see we're, we're, we're generating some data through the Excel uh, spreadsheets with the type functionality. Um, we're starting and stopping timers to make those data points available and, and visible with, uh, on our dashboard. 
And then here's another really cool thing and new functionality of our new workload language, if anyone has any uh, past experience with us. But essentially, you know, our virtual users would execute the workload in a very serial manner. So it's like do A, do B, do C, do uh, uh, D. If you can't do any of those steps, it won't be able to move along to the next, which makes it inherently limited. With the new workload, we're actually able to uh, handle logic statements, right? So say, for instance, we go to uh, save a patient record and it's already been saved before. The first time that that happens, there's no possibility that the record exists, so it will go through cleanly. The second time around, it might pop something up that says, hey, this patient record already exists, and so our virtual user needs to be intelligent enough to say, well, you know, path A is blocked, so I'm gonna try path B, so it's more intelligent, and you can actually um, uh, create customized logging events based upon those uh, logic statements. So it can say, went to pull up a patient record and couldn't find one as well, right? And you might see that as a reoccurring um, within the data set as well. Wow, every Tuesday I go to run a routine patient lookup and it doesn't work at two o'clock in the morning, which is actually an instance that we've seen in a live real world scenario before. Okay. Now, Again, I'm playing devil's advocate for some of the folks on the phone. But this is complicated. This looks complicated. Is yeah. It, is it? You know, and, uh, you know, so, but I'm guessing it's a. So quick fear, thing, right? fear, fear not, Pete. Right. We have a tool just for you, <laughs> right? Now included with every single VSI install, you get an application called Application X ray, right? Some of you may be familiar with the Windows Spy tool, but essentially what this does is generate the snippet of code you'll need for interacting with that application. Uh, by doing this. So say maybe I want to click on the insert object button, right? This now gives me a bunch of information about that particular window, that particular control element, and then the variety of different application functions that we supply with the virtual user, you have the, the ability to essentially select from a drop-down list. And hey, by the way, I could just throw this in and believe that it's going to work, or I could test it out beforehand by hitting the application execute button, and now you're gonna actually see it unfold before your very eyes, right? So now you can just basically do this to generate that list of steps. Oh, and hey, by the way, you know, we realize in this day and age, most modern applications are moving to a web-based format. If you remember that annoying little red box that was on my screen before, that's because I was targeting a specific control element within Google, right? So you got your salesforce.com that you're using. You can now target your login, your password field. You can click your button. You can pull up your, your customer record, whatever that might be to really robustly interact with your environment. Yeah, and then um, I guess the, uh, I lost my train of thought. The, uh, you're just so blown yeah, away. So blown away, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess the question I have is, uh, you know, how so does this capture? So if I do multiple steps, because it you're going to have to uh, grab them one by one, okay. essentially. But again, yep. under all circumstances, this might not necessarily be the the chronological order of yeah. things. Yeah. So I can now create my function and statement and stick that inside of a logic statement in case my course of events don't unfold like they did before, which we didn't have the capacity to do. Now our virtual user has some real intelligence within the session. So, you know, the capacity of this is again, kind of just to draw this all back together. You know, you throw this virtual user at your production environments, connecting from your lo remote locations, you can now understand how your users experience your system as a holistic view um, by the way, just quick side note, now you can run the launcher component natively within IGEL OS, right? Yep. So that's cool. Any consumer that's consuming IGEL thin clients or software-defined endpoints, now you can essentially plug this launcher in. Again, you get end-to-end -end visibility in, in the production environment. From a pre-production environment, we take this workload, we throw a variety of users against your test bed, we find your breaking point. Again, we create a baseline the baseline we can use for AB uh, performance testing. So, you know, the changes that are taking place within your environment, you're going from Windows 7 to Windows 10, you have things figured out already on Windows 7, right? Yep. It's in, been in production now for what, five, seven years, whatever it's been, right? That's easy, but what is Windows 10 going to do? 
If you're providing a desktop pool for 10,000 people, it would be very dangerous to just assume that the experience is going to be the same if you just keep the same configuration, right? Yep. So you wanna know by what degree that that changes from a density application performance perspective, we can use these virtual users to run into that system, find the breaking point, make a change between test sets, test again and understand how that impacts your users before you put it into production. And hey, by the way, you have 5,000 apps, which you need to test every single time. From a compatibility standpoint, we can help uh, with that as well. Nice, and then I finally remember my question. So I assume you guys have some maybe baselines so like that customers can download and then can customers share in a community? Oh, work, a community? so work so. for workloads, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so out of the box, we, we basically handle the bulk application. So practically everyone is going to be running your Office 365 suite. Mm -hmm. So we already have Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, blah, 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 right? That's already out of the box. And we also do things like typing, browsing the internet, um, composing PowerPoint presentations, whatever that might be, out of the box again. Um, the community question is an interesting one because it's something that we've considered before, but with the new architecture of the software and the way that the applications really are granular now, so an application is specifically to that one script that you yeah, um, provide, yeah. Yeah. I can now spin up a community, right? And because of the fact that I can build logic in the workload, I can pretty reliably give you a script that might work in a variety of different epic environments, for example, right? Because the button sets might not be the same. Hey, try this button combination if it's this version of epic, but if it's not this version of epic, try this button combination instead. So I can kind of make them a little bit more universal. It's more useful in that way. Cool. No, that, and I, that hits kind of two questions that were asked from uh, Ali and Scott. Um, so I, I, you want to you want a tough question? No. No. Right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so fire away. Two two folks asked, and it's a really good question. And and I'm going to save the ROI one for the end because uh -oh. that that's the that's the fun question. But uh, you know, how does this you know uh, Luke asked it, and a couple other folks. You know, how does this compare against some of the other players out there? Because I think people get confused in uh, a, uh, login BSI with you know things like control up lakeside eg etc um, can you kind of touch upon that absolutely i mean a lot of times we get we get lumped into that conversation right because they hear the word monitoring and they just try to find the the closest comparable definition of that right yep. the way that i really look at it is that i find value in both of the the type of solutions yeah, like a lakeside or a, a liquidware or a uh, solar winds or a control up, whatever that might be, there is a real value there in understanding how all of your systems in the entire stack are responding on a regular basis while your real users are using them. Yeah. There's a value there, no question. Now, where we differentiate ourselves is as opposed to waiting for the interactions from your real users, we are proactively driving interactions on our own to continually test against what we know as the baseline, right? So that's how we differentiate ourselves. And really the reality is that the benefit is combining those two different views to create a really holistic uh, view of your entire stack. That really helps you understand it uh, to the best degree. Yeah, I, I would, I would. I mean, my, my color here would be, and you can keep me honest, is uh, you guys are more proactive. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and you guys are trying to be in front of an issue uh, We're not versus, waiting for that yeah, support call. Versus these other players are, I would say, are complementary to you guys in that they're monitoring the current environment as it stands today. Why did it happen? And, and give you the why. And then, and then you can maybe go and fix it, leverage We're doing it. They're yeah. telling you why. So I would say I would say you guys complement each other. Absolutely. Um, and not, not really compete. So, um, and then... Uh, I guess since we're on the topic, uh, the, the question came around, how, you know, you know, how, do, how do we touch upon, you know, how do you justify ROI? So if I'm a customer, how do I go to my boss and say, why do I need login BSI? Absolutely. Uh, it's a pretty easy one. Uh, it's weird for people to say that, right, that it's an easy one to justify ROI. But, okay, here's, here's my first question. Help me out here, right? Yeah. 
how much money did you invest in your solution to provide desktops to your users? Just give me a figure, right? Yeah. Give me a modest figure. Yeah. In That's average it. environment is between 1,000 and 5,000 users. You know, you sell these solutions yeah. to people. Tell me how much they cost. Yeah, or probably millions. Okay, probably millions of dollars, yeah. right? Yeah. What if I could tell you you're delivering Windows 10, right? And you're getting 100 users on your specific physical construct, right? What if I could tell you that you can now get 150 users on that? Yeah. I've reduced your cost of delivering that same experience by 50%. I can do that for you in the initial testing that we do with the software. Okay. And then anything beyond that is just icing on the cake, right? Yeah, so another potential use case could be, um, assume, yeah, I'm assuming that because this can run in the OS anywhere, uh, you could mitigate over usage in Azure, for example. So if Absolutely. I'm, if I'm using a workload that might be too robust, you could let me know ahead of time and I could downgrade my workloads hey, to save so money. Here's a question in relation to that, right? And we'll, yeah. we'll see if we can trip you up. Uh, if I were to give you an Amazon MX14 extra large, yeah. which is I think a 24 core machine, and I was to give you a M16XL machine that has 32 cores, right? Which of those two machines do you think costs more money? I'm gonna say the first one because I'm not an AWS guy. Okay, no, no. <laughs> okay, so so let's make it more simple. The second machine is more powerful than yeah. the first machine. Which one do you think costs more money? The more powerful. One. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's conventional knowledge. They're gonna charge you more money for more computational resources. Yeah. Now here's where I'm gonna trip you up. Which of those configurations can better sustain more knowledge workers on it? When knowledge worker is someone okay. that's actually creating Word documents, creating yeah, PowerPoint. I would say logically you're going to say the more powerful one. Absolutely, knowing, right. Knowing the technology behind By it. By what degree? Yeah, and that, that's, that's 50 percent more users yeah. on the the one. Yeah. Maybe right. Yeah. Yeah. You'd actually get 50 percent less users on the one. So yeah. you now incrementally cost yourself 50 percent more by not testing and this is on a compounding basis because it's not like Amazon charges you one time and they just say oh we're good now no they charge you every single month every single minute essentially so that mistake can be very costly especially considering thousands and thousands of these instances to support your user base so basically yeah the simple summary here is with <laughs> ROI and login login VSI it's it's about trying to help the user slash ad it's about server. spending the right yeah. amount of money yeah. right sizing their environments accordingly is yeah what it comes down to so cool uh, again if there's any other questions uh definitely chime in uh again a lot of great questions from everybody uh anything else to show or do you want me to jump over to the 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 you know kind of talking about the save the date uh, I can bring up my screen. I mean, it's it's so, up to you. Yeah. I can talk for hours. Oh, I know you can. Move. All right, so <laughs> let me. Uh, I'm going to cut back over to me, and uh, let's talk about. You guys have a really cool event coming up. Um, I'm going to make sure we highlight it. Um, show my screen and hide this so I can see my screen. And go boom. Come on. All right. So uh, before uh, before I jump into the who is Integra. Uh, yeah, I'd like to just give Brian an opportunity to talk about this really cool summit that uh, oh, Login VSI. Again, huh? Huh? I said you're putting me on the spot again, huh? <laughs> yeah, but it, I'm excited about this. I think this is really cool. You guys just did one in Europe. Absolutely. And, um, just kind of highlight what this is and uh, why it matters. And if you can't get to Boston, is it going to be available virtually? Of course it will be so. available uh, virtually. But uh, the gist of it is this, right? Um, <laughs> We, we found that there was a gap in um, gatherings where they focus primarily on performance in the VDI space, right? So we kind of, you know, fashion ourselves as experts in that area, right? Um, what, a month or so ago, we threw one of these in our Amsterdam, uh, near our Amsterdam location, uh, 260 attendees, keynote by uh, Brian Madden. I don't know if people know who that is, but... <laughs> People probably do. I'm just joking. Um, but basically, industry experts sharing their experiences with virtual desktops, telling you how to get the best performance, what technology pieces that you might want to be aware of, and kind of where the future direction is. That's all going to be compressed into a day. There'll be a technical track for those that are interested in the engineering aspect. There'll be a business track for those that are interested in the ROI question. Um, we will have some really interesting presenters. Um, I might be a little bit biased because I'm presenting, but I don't know the full list yet. Um, but 
at a minimum, we'll have uh, Ruben Sprite, um, Mark Plattenberg, which are, are kind of industry leaders in, yeah. uh, in the BDI space as well. So Cool. Yeah. So again, if, if you're in the Boston area, definitely plan on, you know, coming. Um, it's going to be fun. I'll, you know, I'll definitely be there because I'm excited about this. And uh, a lot of cool data came out of the European one. And yeah. I, I was following it on uh, social media. So. All right, so uh, before I jump into kind of a, a wrap up, uh, again, if you have any questions, please ask us. So I'm gonna, uh, as I go through, I'll put some questions in. Uh, so a good question came up about the X-ray uh, application. Is this a standalone application? Yeah. Or, okay, okay. And is it just, so basically the way that it works yep. is it will help you create the code to execute or to use our engine to execute a set of steps basically. Okay. So that's how it can work on a physical desktop without the brokering process. Basically we just start our virtual user engine up and tell it, hey, run this application script. It is what understands or you know compiles that application script itself. Cool. And then uh uh, Ali asked a good question. So, uh, workflow from Win7 would need to be done in Win10. I think what, and keep me honest here, Ali, if, if, if I'm representing your question correctly, um, what I'm reading this as is do you have to create a workload on Win7 for Win7 and a workload on Win10 for Win10? No, typically not because uh, things like shortcuts, um, uh, Windows P will print, for example, like in most applications. Um, when we reference calling, um, say Outlook or Word, we'll use uh, variable, variableized parameters. So Word, when it installs, typically based upon the version, it's like 11, 12, 13, 15, or whatever. So if we variableize that path, we can essentially say call word.exe in this variableized path. So if we change one location, it now updates to go to 2016 or, two, or yeah. to, to uh, 365. Or generically, you know, one of the uh, variables for Windows is that you can call word.exe yeah. from anywhere and it will start. It doesn't even yeah. matter what the path is really. So there are ways to do it. Cool, Ali, let me know if that answered your question uh, and I represented it properly, so. All right, cool, thank you. Uh, all right, so uh, again, keep keep adding, uh, keep keep asking questions. I'll come back and look at the dialogue in a second. Uh, so any questions you have, please throw them out there. We wanna we wanna hear them and make sure we get them. If for some reason we can't get to your question, we'll follow up after. I do get a list of all the questions, uh, and and uh, bear, you know, so I'll I'll pause and keep checking the Q and A dialogue. Uh, so just a quick, who is Integra? So this is uh, Andy, our founder and CEO. You know, Andy set out with a mission of two things. One, we want to enable our customers. So this is an example of how we do that. We like showing off cool technologies and really in enhancing the community. But also in turn, we want to have a, a true partnership with a vendor like Login BSI. Um, so we look at it as a two-way street and our goal is twofold. One, we want to learn the technology inside and out. And two, we want to help bring that technology to customers like you. Um, and again, recently we were just announced as partner of the year at Citrix Summit. Uh, we're really proud of this and uh, it's a it's a, a really uh, big deal for us and we've worked hard to get here. Um, so what, who is Integra? It's simple, I'm gonna just build this out. Uh, we're a reseller so we can resell you uh, Login BSI as, as, as well as some other partners we have in our stack. Uh, we can also help you get it implemented so we can be your consultant and we can do this on a fixed or or time and materials cost basis. And then finally, we can be an advisor. So you can call up myself, uh, some of our other uh, staff members, and we can we can give you ideas on how to tackle these issues. But my favorite part of the job is, hey, I can help you build a solution um, and provide it on one piece of paper and say, here, if you're gonna use Login VSI with Citrix, here's how it's gonna work, or Login VSI with Epic, here's how it's gonna work, and we can help you uh, get that up and running. Uh, and really provide a good digital workspace experience for your end users. So that's really, in a nutshell, who we are. And again, one of the other cool things is we are a big Microsoft partner. So if you are, I always ask the Office 365 question because if you're not familiar with Fast Track, please reach out and say, hey, what's Fast Track? And two, we also resell uh, Azure and we do a lot with Microsoft Azure. So if this is something that you're doing, obviously we can augment login VSI to make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck. And uh, and we, and we can go from there. Um, and then one of the other cool things is we do offer a managed service. So, you know, that's the question came up earlier. Oh, we are asked the question. No, <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't ask the question, uh, but we do offer a managed service and we are looking at a way to layer this in so we can help, you know, some of the smaller customers in our stack take advantage of login VSI because, 
you know, again, our goal is to help you guys figure out you know, how to get better scale, how to get more out of your uh, out of your applications, and and also um, you know how to get a good experience. So uh, so again, keep that in the back of your mind. If you're interested, we do offer a managed service offering as well as support. So we can act as a frontline support, third level support, uh, and you can hire us to do uh, support for all your solutions that we support. Um, so here's just a snippet of our, our customers. Uh, so you can see we have a lot of great customers and, and everybody asks me, hey, is there a vertical that you focus on? The answer is it depends. It depends on where we are in the country. Up here in the Northeast, it's a lot of healthcare, a lot of finance, a lot of education. Down in the Southeast, it could be healthcare, uh, logistics and travel uh, and education. So it all depends on where we are, but you can see we cover a lot of cool different segments here. And I always like to say no customer is too big and no customer is too small. We, we treat all our customers the same. Um, and then if you haven't, if you don't already know, obviously this is one piece of what, what we do, webinars. I try to do two to three of these a month. I call them webinar Wednesdays, uh, but we also do a lot of free workshops. I do a lot of uh, Citrix hands-on training workshops. So for example, I have a cloud workshop tomorrow. I still have spots available. So if you wanna sign up, feel free. Friday, I have an SD-WAN workshop that I do. Uh, but we do on average two to three events a week uh, focused on technical training, podcast, et cetera. So definitely bookmark this page and sign up. Uh, you'll, I, I promise you won't be disappointed. I try to keep them as entertaining as possible. And then finally, some calls to action today. If you really want to know more about Login BSI, let us know. We can help you get a demo set up. Uh, if you're looking at seriously, you know, acquiring login VSI, let us know. We can make that happen. But really the goal here is we can help you understand this further, uh, get it set up in your environment. I'll give you an example. I downloaded the OVA last night and within 30 minutes I had the, the appliance set up, ready to go. And I'm going to be sitting here with Brian understanding how this works and uh, coming kind of like a little mini expert if I will. I probably won't be as good as him, but <laughs> hey, we'll see. Uh, so again, if you have any questions around how to get this software, definitely reach out. Uh, and we can help you with furthering uh, a demo uh, and get a quote, uh, and we can even provide services on top of that. Um, and before I kind of move forward, I just want to make sure there's some other questions. Um, so Mike, Michael asked, uh, so if one purchases application x-ray, can it be used to create an entire set of test workloads and execute them, or is this an entire, is an entire log in BSI uh, required? So he's talking about packaging. So I guess how is this packaged? <laughs> yeah, so uh, I don't think there's any plans right now to sell uh, the virtual user standalone from the other uh, the other product suites itself. It's an interesting concept. We haven't gotten it uh, before, but I would just say you know get the, uh, the 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 software solution suite. You know I'll tow the company line here and uh, and we'll help you build those uh, those scripts or show you how to use it at least. And, and then Fran asked, uh, how is it licensed? I'm guessing it's per. Oh, course. you're gonna get me in trouble now. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, no. And, and and oh, I can finally answer a question. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you jump in, Alex. We'll um, so, yeah. So for enterprise licenses, it is based on how many users you guys have in your environment. So whether it's Microsoft, Citrix, VMware. Um, and then we work directly with vendors as well, and we have different um, pricing for them. So, but normally it's based on how many users are in your environment concurrently. Cool. And uh, Fran, around the MSP question, uh, definitely reach out. It's it's going to be based on you know the MSP and the agreement that the MSP has with uh, login. So we have an ag agreement in place, and we can kind of answer that uh, as well. And and you know uh, we're still trying to iron all that out, if you will. So to be transparent. So. All right. So, any any final questions, uh, Ali? Can you can you expand on? You just put printer logic question mark. I'm assuming <laughs> you mean does this work with printing and printer logic? The answer I would venture to be yes. Yes. Um, and and <laughs> it's because with X-ray, if you wanted to test the print workflow, you could. That's exactly right. So right. basically, you know, let's say you purchased printer logic and you want to quantify your investment in that, right? I can create a workload that's going to drive interactions with your print stack and you can actually see what the exact result of that is from a density, from a application or transaction efficiency standpoint, right? Yep. So this also gives you the, again, the quantifiable data set to now intelligently optimize again, because I, I don't know exactly how um, printer logic stuff works, but Say, for instance, there is a cache mode setting 
if I turn that off between test sets, I can actually see what the net effect of that is versus guessing, basically. Cool. Yeah, and and, and I can I can speak to Printer Logic because they're a great partner of mine. Uh, they're they offer an on-prem but also a SaaS based solution. And X-ray would work with both. Take pretty, the cue pretty, pretty off your stack and see what the yeah. tangible benefit of yeah. it is, right? Yeah. And uh, and then it's got a tray icon, and I assume you can you can use X-ray to go into the tray. Oh yeah, the tray icon, right yep. click, yep. et cetera. So that so yeah, Al, I, I, it it would work. And if you know if you want to experiment, definitely reach out. I'm I'm always uh, game to have a little fun and build a script. So um, so I like to bring this slide up. Hopefully, I'm guessing some of you are Citrus customers. Uh, the reason why I show this slide is twofold. One Definitely save this date. Uh, Citrix's Synergy is coming up. Uh, that's Citrix's user conference. And two, uh, Zentegra can help you get there. We're offering uh, out of the gate, we can get you a $200 discount off of any of the passes. So if, even if you're alumni or government, we can offer $200 off that out of the gate. Uh, but if you renew your Citrix through Zentegra, uh, we can also offer you a rebate to get you there, potentially uh, your pass paid in full. Uh, or multiple passes, or even passes a pass plus some travel. So uh, definitely consider that as you uh, think about your user conferences this year. It's in Atlanta, and I know Login will be there. Yep. Uh, we do we do a great dinner, uh, which uh, you know we have a lot of great vendors that partake in that, and we're excited. So definitely keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely reply to the email you'll get from me, um, and you can just reply directly to the the email. Uh, again, any final Q and A. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pause and as, as you guys are thinking about any final questions you have, I'm going to put our information up again. Uh, so my name is Pete uh, Downing and I'm the CMTO of Zentegra. You can see my email there. It's easier than that. You can just do Pete at Zentegra.com. Uh, and uh, we have Brian, Marty, I always going to mess up your name, Mar yeah. Martinowitz. I like to give him a good challenge to reach me, you know, don't want to make it too easy. Uh, and you can see his email there. And if you have any questions, uh, you can definitely email the both of us. Uh, technical and, and we can try to answer as best as possible uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll definitely be following up with you all if you if you guys are interested in um, in, in getting a further demo etc so uh, again any final questions and if not uh, you know I'm gonna say thank you to the login VSI team for joining me today we're actually kind of cool I'm coming live from their office in because right. uh, I had the luxury I live in the Boston area and I said hey why don't I just do it from your office so I don't get, you know, I've done this once before with Citrix and it's fun because then we can interact a little better and it makes it a little more interesting. That's so, right. so again, I want to thank everybody for uh, joining today and thank you to the uh, Login VSI team for joining me. Uh, and there will be a recording available of this uh, so you can share it with your colleagues and friends. Uh, and again, uh, watch for our next uh, our next webinar Wednesday. It's going to be with a company called Uber Agent uh, and we're going to be uh, putting that out in the next day or so. So definitely watch for that. And that one's going to be uh, very interesting. And then we have some other cool vendors on queue. Uh, you know, we have Control Up. Uh, we have a, another one around. Um, I'm going to do an update around Citrix Cloud. So keep an eye out for some of these cool webinars. And we do these about two to three times a month. So thank you for joining. And everybody have a great uh, rest of your Wednesdays. And uh, as I always say, see you guys on the flip side.